This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Savory, the Cajun, Discord, the Mad Hatter. Can't go wrong with any seasonings that the Mad Canadian has to offer. Check out all the great seasonings at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is the Mad Canadian bbq.com to check out to check out all seasonings he has to offer. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Hey YouTube. What's going on, buddies? What you, oh, Kyle, let's 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 talk about it while we're YouTubing. Mm-hmm. What are you drinking? Uh, the same one I was last week. <laughs> I gotta I gotta finish my six pack. You have one of those wives that won't let you keep a beer fridge in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I got a lawn raker. That's an nice. Oktoberfest by Land Grant. Nice. I like it. It's an Oktoberfest. It's pretty dang good. It's finally feeling like fall now. Uh, it's, it's, we've had that for... <laughs> it's not on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see if Suncard ever watches the YouTube version. All right. Let's join the uh, the podcast. We've got Barbecue back here. You're all invited Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing, Jared? Uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. It's finally feeling a bit like uh, fall outside. <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't that funny. And only the YouTube people will get why it's even a little bit funny. Okay. Nope. Just moving forward. Just moving forward. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, some, we have a bunch of Ask Sloopcast questions. So I think between, uh, Ask Sloopcast and some small Ohio State updates, and then we're going to do the Sloop Picks after that. I think, uh, I think we're going to make an entire show out of our Sloop Picks and our Ask Sloopcast because, uh, we got some really good questions. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, but first, some quick Ohio State updates. All right, first off here, unfortunately, no black stripes yet. I uh, imagine we might get some later this week as Ohio State is officially in pads as of Wednesday. But no contact yet. But it's always good to see the Buckeyes in pads and seeing them practicing. Just no, no contact. One step on... closer. Yes. Just one step closer. One step closer to, to football, one step closer to Ohio State football. I just want to specify something Kyle says. Um, we record these Friday episodes on Wednesday nights. And I just want to point out that when we say there's been no contact at practice yet, <laughs> we met at on Wednesday. Wednesday's practice. <laughs> so I'm just saying if someone's li listening to this Friday afternoon, maybe, maybe there's been contact at practice. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Uh, some other news here. <clears throat> uh, ooh, you want to tackle this one, Jared? Zen Mikowski. Mikowski. That's kind of what I was going for. Zen Mikowski. I'm, I'm from Eastern Ohio. You can you can throw me all of those types of names. The Polish name. All your, all your Eastern European names. I got those. All right. Mm-hmm. You can give me your Greek Zen name. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I acknowledge this. You can send me all your Greek names. You can send me all of your Polish names. You can send me all your Italian names. I'm going to get those. The Polynesian, I'm still going to need some help on. <laughs> Zen Mikowski uh, is an offensive tackle uh, currently ranked 33rd per 24-7 sports or 48 in the composite. Uh, we'll just go with 24 seven sports <laughs> here just because it fits our narrative better. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's how you start. That's how you media in 2020. 
He's a four-star offensive tackle out of Indiana. Yep. So you're asking, why are we bringing him up? Uh, well, originally committed to Louisville, mm-hmm. but earlier in the week he decides to decommit, and a lot of attention, a lot of uh, rumblings, is that he decommitted to join Ohio State here so, shortly. Yeah, and it's worth noting that he has recently picked up an Ohio State offer. He has also recently picked up a Penn State offer, uh, as well as some other big name offers. So Kyle mentions his recruiting rankings that are coming across a little bit lower than what we typically expect Mm -hmm. Ohio State to get, which should tell us a few things. Um, One, Tristan Lee's not coming to Ohio State. You know, and I'm not saying there's zero chance of Tristan Lee coming to Ohio State. I'm not saying zero. But uh, you know, he's not coming to Ohio State. You can go ahead and but just re- let that go. But recent, recently, he's been getting a lot of offers. Yes. Other than Ohio State. He got one from Florida State. Got one from Penn State. He's yep. getting a lot of yeah. attention. Late, He's a late riser in the class. So, like I said, yeah, like mainly- I was saying... A lot of a lot of lot lower in the rankings than maybe what we're typical mm-hmm. typically get, especially in this recruiting class. But he's a but look at the offers, not the rankings, and expect a bump the next time the rankings get a bump, as I mean, the big as a bunch of big name schools are knocking at his door all of a sudden. Yeah, you look at his size six six and a half. He got a almost a six seven player. 290 pounds yep. that's a big guy in high school right there he has the size to start at a power five conference he has the size there now, absolutely he has that size uh so i was just i was just doing some catch up because obviously he was never really on our radar in the past here uh so just looking at 24 7 here from from alan just kind of little information about just evaluation about him mm-hmm Oh, Kyle didn't mute his phone. I do not. Um, says here he has well above average arm length, mm-hmm. um, has a lot of bulk, added 35 pounds after his junior season. So he's going, he's yeah. building up with, there, hopefully, hopefully that, hopefully most of that's muscle, but, <laughs> but obviously you, you need it. You still need a, well, they, he, he used the term bulk. Typically, yeah. you don't use the word bulk for bad weight. Mm-hmm. It says here, yeah, he's, he'll still need to see how he plays with the added weight and strength, which we'll see. We'll see how he does yeah. this year. Um, works very hard, Has a is headed upwards. Yeah. So that kind of tells you the trajectory that 24-7 sports thinks that he's going to go. So yeah. we'll, we'll see how he uh, grows and uh, moves up into the uh, – the rankings here yeah and what i think an important thing to keep in mind and you know especially for newer people who are listening um who maybe haven't listened to because we haven't talked recruiting in any sort of depth in any of the past few weeks um this has been a really really weird recruiting cycle a really weird recruiting cycle you didn't have all of your camps during the summer you didn't have a lot of visits during the summer so for a guy like Zen, he's sort, you know, all of the recruiting gets locked down. Then he enters this black box. No one's seen him. No one's weighed him. No one's measured him. No one's watched him do anything on a field. And then the actual, then like the actual football season starts, his actual high school football season. And then here comes this different guy back out of the black box. Now, Coaches are still talking to him and they can be like, Hey, what's your weight up to? And Hey, what's your height up to? But you know, kids lie. <laughs> Adults lie. People lie. Humans lie. So then you know, now, now you have him on the other side of this black box. Now you see that not only is his weight up, but it looks like it's good weight. You actually are getting some game film on him. And I think you can see a lot more dramatic changes in the recruiting rankings this late in the cycle compared to years past 
simply because we didn't have all of those camps to evaluate and to reevaluate talent because these are young kids and you know in the terms of football they're teenagers and they develop quickly so you know it's 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 really interesting to see for me how much shifting are we going to see in the recruiting rankings this year versus years past mm-hmm. yeah so kind of finish up the recruiting part of this still nothing really much out of um uh JT or Emeka uh, still kind of relatively quiet overall <laughs> speaking of Polynesian names I haven't tried this one in a while Kyle, I'm gonna give it a shot JT Tuimo Loal mm, that's I, I've regressed on that <laughs> I used to be better at it I haven't said his name in a while and I regressed on it still working need on to that. get better at that need to get better um, but but I don't wait a minute real quick before we move away from Zen mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's coming to Ohio State I'm not saying that. I am absolutely not saying that. <laughs> absolutely not. I am absolutely not saying that. But all the but all the um, predictions on the wall says otherwise. When you look at <laughs> the past two days here, two, four, six, eight, Read ten, the crystal balls. 11, 11 crystal balls. Well, listen, if you're a member of the Buckeye Scoop Forum, or if you pay attention to what the other recruits on Twitter are saying right now, cat's out of the bag. Zen's coming to Ohio. I mean, he's not. He's not coming to Ohio State. I don't know. He's. I'm not saying that Zen Mikowski is coming to Ohio State. You, you but know co- you know who is coming. Someone to Ohio could State? say it. Uh, no, but real quick, you were talking about the kids out west in Washington. I have no reason to believe that either of them are wavering in such a way that should make Ohio State fans. Scared, I still believe both Emeka Abuka and JT Tui Moaloao, that was a little bit better, are coming to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. The yeah. lack of visits hurt. The longer this goes on, the worse people are going to feel about it. And the the worse odds you get, honestly, but I'm 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 still just not all that worried about it. You wanna know who is coming to Ohio State? Who's that? October 24th, Nebraska, our good friends over at Nebraska. Yes, they're our buddies. Are coming to Ohio State noon, noon kickoff. We got not, we got notice that it will be a noon kickoff. And before we hear the whole, and our Discord is in the same boat, before we hear this, oh, why are they playing a noon game instead of a evening night game? This Don't is talk about boxes. our Discord like that. I love my Discord. I love my sleep cats. <laughs> but no, no seriousness though. This is Fox's prime time game is noon. Yeah. And traditionally, that's normal how state plays. As In much the past. as we Yes. That's Urban Meyer did everything he could to make sure Ohio State played underneath lights. And ESPN mm-hmm. did everything they could to make sure Ohio State played under lights. So during the urban era, Ohio State played under lights frequently. That being said, with Fox as the new TV partner, with Ryan Day either A, not having the weight, or B, not really caring to pull the weight about time slots, mm-hmm. Ohio State's playing at noon. It's what Fox wants. Fox is the primary TV partner now. Fox is wants to own a time slot. CBS has decided they own the 3.30 time slot. ESPN has decided they own that 7, 8 o'clock time slot. Fox is saying, okay, we own noon. And it's all a big strategy to own a time slot. Okay, awesome. Fox will own that noon slot. Which I'm happy about, personally. Because, A, I don't think it has that big of a thing on recruiting anymore. Because everyone's on TV all the time now. So I don't really think it's much of a recruiting thing anymore. I think even during Urban's time here, I think he really overestimated how important that was because I don't think it's important. Um, It it worked to an extent. Urban Meyer worked. It's hard to... (laughs) 
And by the way, the recruiting still was going really good right now, even though Ohio State played almost all noon games last year. So it's fine. True. You know what? You know what gets recruits winning. That's what gets recruits. Oh, uh, so yeah. And Fox is also attempting to do everything they can to get people watching their pregame instead of game day and having your biggest game on right after the pregame is going to get more people to tune over to Fox, especially right at the end, right at the end, which is like game day's big thing. Corso puts his headgear on and da, 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 da. And the crowd goes da, 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 da. That's, that's, that's their big thing. And anything Fox can do to not even, not, not beat game day. Cause even in the best of scenarios, they're years away from that but to just sort of chip away at it just to let people know that there's an alternative, which is what they're doing. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Oh, another news too, that I, I saw today, Jared, as we are start, slowly starting to see some of these players who originally announced, Hey, I'm going to forego. I'm yeah. going to um, uh, get ready for the NFL and all that. Now we're starting to see some players come back and all that. It's looking like Penn State is not going to get their wish and look like Micah Parsons will not be coming back to Penn State. Yeah, uh, Parsons has uh, apparently decided to continue training for the Combine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big blow for Penn State, but I still think they're the second best yeah, I do. Yeah, too. second best in in the the Big North Conference. Yeah, yeah, not 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 just in the East, but in the whole conference. I agree. Mm, all right, all right. Let's get to our ask Slipcast questions here. Unless you have anything else, Jared. Nope. All right, cool. All right, uh, let's go. Th- let's go with our first one here. Dinger, hello, Dinger. How do you how do you prefer to dagger a team? Completely a lone receiver waiting for a bomb to arrive or when a running back makes it to the second level and it's obvious no one has the angle to get him. To uh, me, yeah, to, go ahead. to me, it's the latter. It like you're you have so you have pretty much almost every aspect of the offense playing a key part for a running back to get to the next level there. Heck look at look at zeke here yeah. <laughs> zeke and against alabama that the, the infamous 85 yards through the through the heart of the south there that had every player on that offense had a key part for him to break that run with a wide receiver breaking an ankle on a one-on-one there it's just what it is. It's the quarterback and the receiver on a one on one. I mean, yeah, we'll be like, oh, that's an amazing no, how throw dare you. catch there. How dare you belittle the work of the slobs who are all keeping their quarterback clean? How dare you, good sir? How dare you? <laughs> just to me, yeah. I feel I feel like a running back able to break it just shows the um whole team effort. How well yeah, a good team team effort and how well a play design is is actually executed yeah and, i mean heck that 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 run with zeke with um names escaping me just did a complete block spencer seal it yes yeah, spencer did a complete block to seal and zeke yeah. just had to just make one cut and he was off to the races yeah, I, I prefer the run as the dagger because, to me, a long run is always more devastating than a long pass. Um, because a pass is sometimes it's a busted coverage and sometimes it's, like Kyle said, maybe just one wide receiver running a really good route. But when you're running the ball effectively... That's just daring the other team to stop you. Passing is not, this is, this is way too simplistic. Let me acknowledge that. But passing is sometimes a little more chess. It's a little more my scheme versus your scheme. 
it's a little more, um, how do I want to say this? Fin I, maybe finesse. It's a little more, hey, I'm trying to throw a long pass on you. Running, on the other hand, is more like wrestling. That's two guys in a circle on a mat and they both know exactly what the other person wants to do. And then you just do it better. You know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. And if you're at the end of the game, if you're still throwing bombs on a team and you've probably already won, like, eh, like, Hey, I'm not saying don't do it, but when you're running the ball, you're like, Hey, we were just trying to run out the clock and Oops, we scored. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's, I, I think a long run is always more satisfying than a long pass. It is. And I feel like that, it's especially more, in college football, I, I feel like running the ball, especially when you run it effectively and you're able to run it efficiently all game, all game long. That's just, that just so much on the defense is just, you feel so terrible, like, oh, we can't stop them. Yeah. Just so demoralizing that they just, like, it, it's hard It's hard to explain. Yeah. I, I, it just, to me, it just, I think you, you said it right, demoralizing the team by just running it down, right down their throats. Like, hey, you're not, put you're not eight tricking in the box, them. Put, ten, put 10 in the box. You're not stopping us. You're not tricking them. You're not fooling them. You aren't out thinking them. You, you're just out muscling them. You are saying, hey, everyone, this is the play we're about to run. Stop us. It just, it just really reminds me of uh, the 300 yard game with, with Eddie George, where it was just like, hey, they're put Illinois is putting 10 guys, nine guys in the box. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie's going to, Eddie's going to pound it down your throat. All right, Kyle. Next question. All right. Next one here. Duncan. Duncan says who wins more games, the Ohio state 2011 team or this year's um, team up North, which is kind of funny because that actually brings up a good point. So six games, but but the team up north plays nine games. So that actually brings up a good point here. Well, possibly 10 games, but nine games here. And I don't know, that's, that's, that's actually really intriguing because of the limited games that are this year. Yeah. Um, the difference being that you will have a bowl. Well, you might not have. I don't know what the bowl. We, we don't know what the bowl no. games are this no. year. So maybe not a bowl game. So maybe you only have nine opportunities at a win if you're Michigan. Mm -hmm. And they're not beating Ohio State. They're not beating Penn State. And I heard someone say, well, um, Ohio State doesn't, or excuse me, Penn State doesn't win at Ann Arbor. Well, if there are any fans in the stands, how much does... How much does home field really matter? Or even if we do have fans by then, I don't know when they play each other on the calendar. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not going to be the same. It's going to be at best 20% capacity. So I don't care where they're playing. It, it, I, honestly, most of these games are basically neutral field games I mean, this year. I mean, there's a, there's a valid shot that... The regular season, the eight games, Michigan Michigan could be five hundred. There's a real shot at that. Whew. All, right, all right, let's let's go through the schedule. Let's go real quick. Lightning at round. Minnesota, at Minnesota, that could go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, home to Sparty, they'll win that. So let's just say five hundred. Okay. At Indiana, they'll, they'll win, win that. that. Two and one. Uh, home to Wisconsin, I think they lose that. Two and two. Mm -hmm. At Rutgers. They'll win that. Home to Penn State. They'll lose that. So now they're three and three. Home to Maryland. They'll win that. Four and three. And oh. then in Columbus. Four and four. So really. Like I said, there's, there's a real yeah. shot that they could go four and four. So you know what? And then the Minnesota game was the only one. 
Mm-hmm. And I think Minnesota could go either way. And I, I like Minnesota more, but it's week one, and that's just so weird, especially mm-hmm. now. Yep. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, 2011 Ohio State on that question. Yeah, let's let's go with that one. Let's go with that. All right. Uh, Sun Card asks us, who will be better, last year's Ohio State team or this year's? This team will have a better offense. Last year's team will have a better defense. And I know that's a cop-out answer, and that's not an answer at all. Um, this, year's Ohio, this year's offensive line will be better. This year's quarterback will be better. This year's wide receivers will be better. They won't be as good at running back. They won't be as good running they'll back. Be they'll be better at tight as, end. They won't be as good on the defensive line. They won't be as good on the defensive line. They'll be better at I linebacker. But I, I don't know if they'll be better. I think they're they might be worse on the secondary. They're worse on no. They're absolutely worse on the secondary. So kind of fifty fifty then. Yeah, in a way. But Kyle, what do I always say when it comes to college football talent? Give me the quarterback. Mm-hmm. What else do I always say? Give me the offensive line. And you got you got. A year experience quarterback now. They yeah, have, well, one Justin Fields. Belt. Justin Fields will be better this year. I said mm-hmm. they have a yeah. better quarterback this year, and I know at I'll least go. one person was like, "They have the same quarterback." Yeah, he's better now. I mean, I really like to be the homer and say, "Well, this year's team is better than last year's," and say that the same thing about next year. Like, "Well, this year's team is better than last year," but with circumstances that's going on right now how much of that's going to really play a part of it too. Yep. This team may be better overall, but how well will they really perform with just the anomaly that's going on the odd scheduling late star. So and all the that teams too. that will be at an advantage this year will be the teams with continuity. What does Ohio state have this year? They have continuity. They're minimal changes along the offensive line. Uh, They had pretty minimal coaching turnover. Um, The, and look at the two guys, you know, they lose a defense, a co-defensive coordinator slash defensive backs coach. They bring in Kerry Combs. That's almost as good as continuity. It's Kerry Combs. Then your quarterbacks coach, they they brought up a grad assistant. So that's more continuity. And let's also face facts that Ryan Day is really the quarterbacks coach anyway. Mm-hmm. Continuity along the offensive line, which is huge. And where they lost, they won, in my opinion. And then quarterback quarterback with the offense quarterback with the coaches just quarterback with the scheme that's huge in continuity yep and to me the offensive line the coaching staff the quarterback in relation to the offensive scheme those are the three biggest issues those are the three biggest places that you want continuity Mm -hmm. and that's where Ohio State has continuity this well, that and then, then let's just also face fact that they have raw talent. All of those things equals Ohio State doing pretty well with this entire situation. Yeah. Which is also why Bama and Clemson will also be pretty much untouchable this year. Yeah, it's just, it's those three teams versus the field. And even then, I I, I even slot Ohio State and Clemson a half notch above Bama. Mm-hmm. And I might change my mind once I see uh, Mac Jones. Is that his name? Once I see him play quarterback some more, once I see them go up against the real test, mm. we'll see what the offense looks like. Yep. All right. Next question here. Sun card asks us, how close are we to a year round Friday episode? We need more money. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the fact. Um, we want to, we want to do, we do year round episodes. Uh, we have a goal on the Patreon that basically says if more people donate and if we hit a donation goal, 
that we'll start doing year round two week or yeah, two episodes a week schedules. Um, we'll also start doing more video content and that's not even a, like a, Hey, meet the budget. And then we'll start doing more video content thing. That's a, we need equipment to do more video content thing. Uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, uh, I, I kind of went on a long thing last week about sort of increasing our Patreon, um, membership. And we had a couple people absolutely follow through on that. I'll, I'll shout them out a little bit later in the show. Um, and you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go on a big thing again. I already, I did that last week. I'm not going to do it again. And now we're doing it right in the middle of the show, which is almost even more valuable. So yeah, uh, we want to do that, but we you mm-hmm. just, we need the budget to do it. All right. Next question here. Med Canadian himself asks us, what is, what is the best tailgate food to eat while watching an SEC team get stomped? Who's the SEC team? If it's the Gators, it's Gator. If it's Bama, it's elephant. No, elephants are endangered. Don't you touch any elephants. Um, maybe some red beans, some crimson beans, if you will. Uh, let's see. Uh, the tigers. I don't, I don't recommend you eating any cats of any size. Um, well, so I, for for two of the teams, you could do you can grow some hot dogs. Ah, uh, okay, okay. For the bulldogs, I was just uh, thinking. I was just thinking <laughs> beef. Ignore the dog part. Go with the bull. But hot. So, but you can also do hot dogs. That also works. In fact, you can do some all beef hot dogs. Boom. There's your answer. Mm-hmm. All right. There's way too many cats in that conference. Three, <laughs> three separate tigers alone. Is there and an addition cat. and a wild cat? I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to make like the easy Chinese food joke here. That's, that's too no. easy. Um, and I can't, I what do what do you, what's what cat? I, I, you don't, don't eat cat. I, I don't no. care what size the cat is. Don't eat cat. Hmm. Awesome information with uh, a trio of questions here. First one, at what point do you think we'll see a separation of the two freshman quarterbacks? So I think the, I think a key thing he says there, when do you think we'll see it? We being fans. We won't see the separation until like next spring. I think they're going to preserve both of their red shirts, which means injuries aside. Injuries and health. Injuries and health aside. Um, we'll, we won't see either of these. Well, it, of course, no one, no one's using eligibility this year. No, one, so yeah, you, no one's using eligibility this year, so the red shirt thing doesn't even apply. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I don't, I don't know if you see outside of like Rutgers and Maryland, maybe Michigan State, if that gets crazy. I don't think we see any of these guys anyway. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think you're just going to see Ohio state try and get Gunner Hoke as ready as possible. God forbid. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, next question from Austin formation. If Baron fields, there is one offensive player you would least like to lose this season. Who would it be? Uh, pro- I could think of, they're all along the offensive line. Ohio State's That's deep. What I was thinking. Ohio State's deep at wide receiver. You don't want to lose Chris Olave. You don't want to lose Garrett Wilson. But they'll be fine at wide receiver. The wide receiver room is incredibly deep. You want everyone at full health, obviously. Uh, the offensive line, I think, is where Ohio State can least afford to lose anybody. The running back room is very deep. Tight end room is deep. Um. The offensive, especially on the tackles. Yes. It's one thing. You have, your, your left tackle. Your left tackle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Thayer Munford. I mean, that's... Mm-hmm. They they have backup he's, centers. He's they have stone. backup guards. You have two good tackles over it right, right now. Um, it's and in, in which case, you probably see one of them bump over to left 
if something happened to yeah. Thayer, May, uh, Thayer Munford. But yeah, it's it's Thayer Munford. Yeah, he's your cornerstone of that offense of line. Yeah. All right. Um, last question here from him: Should the Pac-12 be punished playoff-wise for only playing seven games? Will the SEC, Big Twelve, ACC get a boost for playing more? I think. First off, we don't know that they're going to play more. Games are going to mm-hmm. get canceled. They'll attempt to postpone them. They'll attempt to reschedule them. Yeah, we, I mean, we, there's already don't... teams. There's already teams in the Big Twelve and ACC who yeah have postponed games. And you know, I'm just going to say canceled games. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Baylor, one of their games, was actually like canceled. Canceled. I think it was their yeah. out of conference warm up game against a cupcake, and I think it got. I don't want to say cupcake either because a couple of those Big Twelve teams got whooped by their cupcakes. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's nothing. Um, I this is this is a really great year to have humans in charge of the playoff. Yes, I don't think I don't think the Pac-12 should be punished. They should not. If they have an undefeated, if they have an undefeated team in the Pac-12, I think there's a very solid chance that they should be in. Yeah, I mean. The chaos. I, mean, I don't think there's. I don't think there's going to be an undefeated team in the in the Big Twelve this year. I so if you have an undefeated Texas. team in the SEC, Texas the is ACC. still out there. Texas is back. No, I More don't bad, actually believe that. I don't actually uh, believe that. <laughs> but no, I don't think they should be punished. No, but might it factor in? It could. It could. It could, but not punished. No. All right, Kyle. One more ask Sloopcast question. Yes. Tanner. Uh, Tanner Gale, Hello, Tanner. who is one of our new patrons over at Patreon. Yep. He says, what's up, guys? What's Hi, up, Tanner? I heard a group of college football writers agree that there are only two consensus consensus great teams in college football this year. Clemson and Alabama. Mm-hmm. Is this delusional SEC bias, or do you guys agree that in a year that has been so crazy on and off the field that Ohio State needs to prove itself first to be deemed a top dog? I, you know, it might. I would have to hear the context and what was being said. They may have just not been including the Big Ten yet in that discussion because depending upon, you know, maybe Bama had played a game at that point and Clemson has played one or two games at this point and it may have just been contextual. Um, if they honestly believe that Ohio State isn't on that same level, then you can just disregard anything they had to say. Ohio State is one of the best two teams in the country, period. Beating mm-hmm. Clemson, it feels... It, feel, it feels a lot like the year, um, a couple of years back in the NBA, where we were all just sort of sitting around waiting for the Cavs and the and the Warriors to meet in the finals. Like, we all knew it was going to happen, and we were all just sitting around waiting for it to happen. It's kind of how I feel about this. I think we're just kind of sitting around waiting for Ohio State and Clemson to eventually play in the playoffs. Yep. Unless Bama screws it up. Because Bama can't, Bama can screw it up. Bama's good enough to do that. Yeah, you know who, you know who can't I, screw it up? The Mad Canadian. Yes. You know who else can't screw it up? Cooper Durst. He's our other new patron. So not only brought to you by the Mad Canadian, but also brought to you by Cooper Durst. But yeah, um, I had to give him a shout out. I'm legally required to. It's on the Patreon page. The. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the Mad Canadian. Kyle, what's this? That is one of my favorites. The Kerry Steak Seasoning. Mm, it's one of my favorites, too. You know what else is one of my but, favorites? Focus. That is the smoked. The smoked. The smoked. The smoked. This is one of my favorites, too. That is the Cajun. That is Cajun. the Cajun. Why won't there is the focus? Oh, you know what? This one's one of my favorites as well. That's the Coffee and Q. Uh, let's see. The Snoring Heat's one of my favorites. The Mad Hatter is one of my favorites. The Old Fashioned is one of my favorites. You sound, you sound like a um, 
a person I watch on um, on YouTube where he's like, "This is my favorite. This is my favorite." And you know what? They're all your favorites. They're all they're all my favorites. They're all my favorites. Which one, Kyle? If you had to pick one, if you had to pick one, pick one Mad Canadian Spice. I would probably go with the Snoring Heat. It's a do it all. It it's is. a do it all. So so is the S and P Bud. I actually just made some like. So I, I took a baggie and I cut up some potatoes, uh, some Brussels sprouts, and some baby carrots. Um, tossed them all in a baggie, put a little bit of canola oil in there, uh, put a little bit of garlic salt in there, just a, like a tiny little splash of uh, balsamic vinegar. And then I um, put a bunch of S&P bud in there and I shook it up and I've just been sort of scooping it into the mm-hmm. air fryer as, as I need a side dish for the week. Yep. And it's been, it's been real good at S and P bud. It's, it's salt and it's pepper, but believe me, it's a lot more. It's, it's great yeah. stuff. Be sure to check out all those great seasonings at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the mad Canadian BBQ.com. Promo, sclo- promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10% off mad Canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered. Kyle, that's uh that's the ad read. We got through all of the questions, so I think it is time to go ahead and look at our slew picks. What do you say? Yes, the slew picks. We got seven games here, seven games to go through. First one off the top, got a pair of SEC teams. Real quick, Kyle, did you remember to do your final score this week? I did. Oh, awesome. By the way, we we really put ourselves at a disadvantage by advertising what that final score is. Oh, well. Uh, (laughs) First off here, we have the Gamecocks. We got Uh got the Gamecocks. Uh Uh-oh. Versus the Gators. It's going to get demonetized Uh, on YouTube for that one. All right. (laughs) Uh, Florida is an 18 and a half point favorite. All right, we got Apollo my... Cam on on YouTube. We got he's. Are you lifting your back leg? You cannot climb up here. You are way too big. <laughs> All you right, keep I got those my legs I got my down. first pick here. I'll go first here, Jared, since you seem to be pretty preoccupied. He's he's over all me. over me tonight. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, I really like Florida's offense. I really like what they're going. I think they'll. Step it up on defense here. South Carolina, who lost to Tennessee, I don't think is a really good team. No. Uh, give me Florida and the points. I will take it. I'll take the 18 and a half. I agree. Um, I really like what Florida is doing offensively. I don't think scoring is going to be a problem. We'll see how their defense does this week. Yep. I don't think that they're facing nearly as good of an offense this week. So... Mm-hmm. With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and go with Florida. 18 and a half is a big number, but I'm going to roll with it anyway. Yep. All right. Next up here, Jared. TCU and your favorite team, Texas. How dare you? How dare you, good sir? Texas. I've had is to pull a... that twice on you this episode. Stop it. It might not be the last time. Uh, <laughs> Texas is a 13 and a half point. Jared. Yeah. Who do you have? I'm going to go TCU. Um, cool. Not not to win. I think Texas wins this game. Uh, 13 and a half just feels a little too big because uh, Texas did not impress me last week. So I, I'd be hesitant to take them 13 and a half over, over anyone right now. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think I saw a stat here of the last five matchups. Texas is Texas only covered is only one in four on the spread. So, and I don't, I don't like how Texas defense looked at all. It just looked your well, offense. This is going to be a shootout. I think this might be a, another shootout here and it's going to be a, big another club for Texas. Yeah. yeah so give I, me, yeah. give me the, give me TCU. And just for the record, TCU is not any good this year either. No, no, nope. Uh, next up here, Jared. Yeah. Memphis and SMU. Here we go here, Jared. It's our favorite spread here. Two and a half. 
two and a half and six and a half points. So here's, don't, don't, here's one do of the Do not numbers. get me started. Two and a half. Yeah. Memphis. And that is who I'm going to go with. I think Memphis will cover that. Uh, I think it definitely will be close, but I'll take, I'll take Memphis to cover here. I agree. Um, two and a half is just, isn't enough to scare me off is, is basically what that boils down to. I, I like Memphis to win this game. Um, so yeah, just give me Memphis. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pick the win- two and a half. I'm just going to pick the winner. All right. All right. Next up here, South Florida and the fighting fickles. Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati here is a 21 and a half point favorite. Who do you have here, Jared? Going with South Florida, uh, not to win, but to cover 21 and a half points. Uh, Fickle has a little too much trestle in him for me to ever take Cincinnati plus 21 and a half. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with the the listeners here. I've already done my picks. I'm I'm looking it yeah, off yeah. my phone. I've yeah, done yeah. all my picks here. I believe you. And I also I also picked South Florida to cover here. Are, I, are we completely matched up so far? We are. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, Twenty one and a half is way too much. I don't I don't think Cincinnati just has that offensive power to really scare me as much. Um, definitely. I, I, I just not sure about the defense. I know they looked decent um, in their first two games here. It just 21 and a half is just too much for me. So yeah, give me, give me the bowls. Give me South Florida. All right, Kyle. Yep. Next next up up here. Here we go. We got Texas A&M and Alabama. Alabama is a 17 and a half point favorite. Bama. And I don't think I think they crush that. I would have taken I would have taken Bam at like twenty four and a half. I was going to say if this was swapped with Cincinnati and Bama, I'd still <laughs> take Bama here. Yeah, yeah, I'd still take Bama. I think I think I, they, I, I think it should be swapped. If you swapped think, those spreads, I would probably take Cincinnati, and I, I would still think, take Bama. I don't think Texas A and M is that good this year. No. I really don't. I don't I think really they're don't. that good any year, and and it's tough. It's tough because they play in the SEC West. I, I acknowledge that. It is tough because they play in the SEC West. But one or two good years, and it was just because of a quarterback that was there. But even then, they weren't that great under Manziel. Good team. They they upset Bama. They won some big games, but they also lost a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we both picked Bama there. All right, uh, next up oh, here. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Texas A&M Bama is our tiebreaker game. What is. what is your total score? I have total score of 63. Whew. I am 63 far, points. Far more conservative. I'm sticking at 55. Okay. Because I don't think Texas I don't think Texas A&M scores a lot. I think it's going to be something like something like 40 something to the teens, something like that. So that would put it. Okay. Well, I guess it depends on how high that teen and how high that 40 something is. Ah, there you go. All right. Next up here, Auburn and Georgia. Georgia. I had to, I had to really look at that just to yeah, double yeah. check. <laughs> Georgia is a six and a half point favorite. And <laughs> Auburn to cover me Auburn. and win. Auburn, 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 Auburn. Cover yes. and win. Yes. All day. Yes. yes. Uh, now it's worth worth noting, and I keep forgetting the dude's name. I don't know why, uh, but their their quarterback is medically cleared to play at at Georgia. The transfer from USC. I can never remember his name. I don't know why, um, but he's cleared to play. That doesn't. I so I think he's going to. I think most people are expecting that he will. So that should help Georgia. We'll see how much it helps Georgia. JT Daniels. Daniels. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I needed just a little push, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that'll help Georgia. I don't know how much it'll help Georgia. So I'm, I'm going to stick with Auburn. All right. Yep. I got Auburn as well. Last game here, Jared, Oklahoma and Iowa state. Oklahoma is a six and a half point favorite. 
I think Oklahoma is just going to come out just red hot here. They're just going to be too much of an offensive power for Iowa State to keep up. I'll, I'm going to pick Oklahoma here. I will take Oklahoma minus six and a half against any Big 12 team. And I know I'm saying that after they just lost last week. I, I get it. <laughs> but I will take Oklahoma minus six and a half against any Big 12 team. Yeah. I just think this is just the wrong week for Iowa Iowa State to upset somebody. <laughs> I will take Oklahoma minus six and a half against all but six or seven teams in the country. Unfortunately, that defense really falls apart on them against those six or seven other teams when it matters the most. Yep. So, Jared, yeah. that means that we are all evened up we picked exactly the same here which oh, doesn't man. happen too often no it doesn't so it's going to come down to that final score mm-hmm. of the uh of the texas a&m bama game once again i picked 55 what did you pick 63 so that's about that's a touchdown yeah 65 55 and 63 uh so eight points yeah it's eight points uh so we can't tie. Uh, that's what I was doing there. We can't tie. <laughs> All right. So we will we will have a winner, and it'll be me. Uh huh. But we'll we see. were supposed to have a guest picker, um, and he didn't email us. That's disappointing. I sent him. That's the, disappointing. I sent him the stuff. He he asked for a slot. I gave him a slot. I. <laughs> I hope you're listening and I hope you feel, but no, I'm, I don't know what happened in your life. I, I hope everything's fine. Um, but yeah, I send him the stuff on Monday and I said, get it back to us by Wednesday evening. And oh, well, um, stuff happens, I suppose. Yep. All right. That is it. That is, that is our show here. Got through some ask Swoopcast questions and be sure if you have any questions for us hit us up on twitter using the hashtag ask Swoopcast or email Swoopcast at gmail.com we'll get to your questions on our next episode yep yep uh yeah ask Swoopcast. uh as it's kyle i don't know why i was about to just repeat what kyle said um also, like the easiest way to ask us questions is to join up on Patreon. And again, I'm not going to go into that big spiel again, but Kyle and I are trying to do a bit more, but we need a budget to do it. So, you know, like I said, you get access to the Discord, early release on episodes, exclusive promo codes uh, for the Mad Canadian, believe it or not. he Oh, he also uses us as test, <laughs> I'm going to say test pigs test pigs uh, for his spices sometimes. So there's lots of cool benefits to being uh, just in that $3 tier. There are more benefits with some more expensive tiers, uh, but that $3 tier, uh, if I could get like five people, five people this weekend, that would be amazing. I don't care if you're at the $3 tier, five people would be amazing. That's all I need, like five people, and we'll see what happens. Um, if that's not a thing you can do, and if you want to get something tangible for your money, uh, you can go to our T Public store, and you can find that link uh, within the master link. It's a campsite link. It'll take you to all the links, uh, and you can either buy a Sloopcast uh, T-shirt, also hoodies, uh, all sorts of different things you can buy logos on, and. Uh, also the 7071 store. So in case you don't want to wear something that's specifically like, this is from a podcast and you just want to wear something with a neat design on it. Uh, you can check out our 7071 store. Kyle and I are both wearing Sloopcast merch. Uh, just in case Texas, Florida, or LSU ever forget who the real DBU is, you can wear this t-shirt. This is my, uh, DBU t-shirt, which suggests Ohio state, but legally doesn't. And Kyle's wearing our uh, GoldenEye parody shirt. That's the font and the gun and the circle from, from GoldenEye. Uh, Kyle's giving himself a uh, memory exam. It's not October. Actually, yes, it is. It is October by the time this comes out. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. As Kyle... 
Oh, Maybe you guys are gonna need to check out. You guys are gonna need to check out the YouTube video for that one. We need to end this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kyle, I'd love to end this episode, but we have to uh, we have to visit Kyle's corner first. Mm-hmm. Uh, one other person mentioned Micah Parson. One other person to make note here: um, been officially cleared to play. Rashad Batman ah. has been official. Yes, it, yes, he is been cleared to Bateman, play. Is it not? Hmm? Bateman. Bateman. Yes. Is there an E in there? It's Bateman. B A T E M A N Bateman. Yeah, uh, that's the Minnesota wide receiver for anyone unfamiliar. Um, I, I know that he, I, I think I'm going to back that up. I think he had um, contacted Tom Mars uh, about making sure he was eligible. Um, I mm-hmm. think the NCAA just said, please don't sue us. We have enough to deal with right now. Yeah. Y'all, Beyond y'all the- go play college football mm-hmm. and leave us alone be on the lookout so he changed numbers this year he went from 13 single digit oh he's zero did he go to zero he went to zero uh we have not heard word if any of the ohio state players will yeah, be utilizing we have not zero. heard I'm, I'm really curious about that too so we'll we'll keep an eye out that, for that if if they're doing it they're keeping it a secret which is a thing that uh, we wouldn't put past ohio state to do but but, but yeah. we see We've seen practice footage come out from Ohio State from their official Twitter account. Um, we see all sorts of graphic designs. No one's wearing any zeros. No one's announced the number change. But I, I wouldn't put it past Ohio State to just on game day, someone's just all of a sudden wearing a zero. But I'm, I'm so glad that seven banks got seven. Is wearing seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that had to happen, right? Had to, yeah. All right, that's it. That's it for That's me. That's it for Kyle's Corner? That's all. Just... I don't want to talk about the crew. That was a bad game. We're just going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by... Kyle, I don't have anything lined up. I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. Uh, the Sidekicks. Make sure to check out the Sidekicks. They'll be ending today's show. Uh, you can check the show notes for... Uh, some links and the uh, song title. That's the, that's the phrase I was looking for. And the song title. And uh, yeah, check out that master link. It's got all the cool stuff in it. It's got all of our social media stuff in there. Uh, it has YouTube links. If you're, you hear us talk about YouTube, but you don't know where to find us, that's in there. It's got the t-shirt stores and the Patreon. It's got a link to the Mad Canadian down in those uh, down in that master link and even reminds you what the promo code is. So go ahead and check out that master link. It's where all of our, uh, all our cool stuff is. And with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the sidekicks. He's been crawling on me for an hour straight. An hour straight. He wants attention. He always wants attention. (laughs) He never doesn't want attention. (laughs) This is the kind of bonus content you get on YouTube. You don't get to hear the sidekicks, but you get to see me play with my dog and talk about how much of a pain in the butt puppy he is. (laughs) Don't let him know how much I like him, though. (laughs) Don't let it get to his head. No. What? I let you out before we did the show. You have food and you have water. I don't know what you want other than to just bite my hand. All right, let's rejoin the podcast listeners. Once again, I'd like to thank the, thi- the sidekicks or the sidekicks something for uh, ending today's show. And of course, thank the Mad Canadian for sponsoring today's show. Um, Mad Canadian, if I had to cook my dog because he's a pain in the butt and has been climbing on me and no. making stop, just, just stop that bit. Stop just the stop bit. That. No. Okay, I'm <laughs> stopping that bit. Uh, let's see, Mad Canadian. He's got some new spices coming. He's got the bus going. 
uh, the bus is going. He, I did not give us any new dates, I don't think. But make sure to check out Mad Canadian's social media pages, his Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, his Twitter page. He's always advertising where the next time, when and where the next time the bus will be. That's a terrible sentence. I apologize, everybody. But he's out there cooking. And you guys uh, can go sample the Mad Canadian for yourself. And when I say sample, I mean pay. <laughs> go buy a sandwich. Go buy some sides from the Mad Canadian. Uh, he uses all of his own spices. That shouldn't surprise you even a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the Brits blend. Kyle, I think I'm going to make some nachos this weekend. What do you think about that? I'm going to make a thing of nachos this weekend for football Saturday. Yeah, that's good. Hey, you know, I'm gonna just put on to let you know, oh, so I'm it looks like some, I'm going to put some Brits blend on those nachos. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I have here looking at his Facebook page as I'm reading this here. So he says here, there's customer appreciation day this Friday, October 2nd, uh, serving lunch from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Looks like it is... Um, do, 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 at our Cary Banking Center. At the Cary so, Banking Center in Cary, I assume. <laughs> yes. Um, for those needing an address, it's 129 East Finley Street. There you go. Go check out the Mad Canadian. Tell them the Sloopcast podcaster sent you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure to specify podcasters because otherwise he won't know. <laughs> Just wink at him and be like, I'm a sleep cat too. That's all you got to do. Just be like, sleep cat. Yes. That's all you got to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, once again, uh, you can go to madcanadianbbq.com, buy some, one, some of his wonderful spices, use promo code sloopcast10 at sloopcast10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 